of these muscles of the GI, it is fluctuating. It is slowly rising. Okay, it is slowly rising and it again comes down. It is slowly rising and it again comes down. Okay, but there is no any movement and secretion in this period. Okay, there is no any movement and secretion in this period. Movement and secretions only occurs when the smooth muscles generate action potential. Okay, when smooth muscles generate action potential, then only there is movement or there is the secretions from the gland. Okay, so this slow undulating fluctuation in the membrane potential, this upstroke portion, it is due to the influx of sodium. Okay, so it must reach the threshold potential. Threshold is above, above minus 45 millivolt. Okay, so if this slow fluctuating, slow waves, it reaches the um, membrane potential of minus 45, greater than minus 45 millivolt, then only there is superimposed action potential. Okay, if this slow wave, it reaches, if this resting membrane potential reaches, uh, goes upward and reaches the threshold potential, then only action potential occurs. We have recalled, uh, we, we have uh, read it in the basics that action potential only occurs when threshold is reached. If there is no threshold, then action, there is no any action. Okay. If there is no threshold, then there is no action. Right now, my brain is giving signal to my um, muscles of the muscles of the tongue and face. They are giving constant action potentials so that I am speaking. If my brain is not giving any action potential, I would not be able to speak. Like that, this slow wave of slow wave of depolarization, they are just the resting membrane potential in the GI system. They are unstable. Okay. They are unstable. They are just going up and they are just going down. Okay. And action in the muscles, it only occurs whenever these slow waves have superimposed action potential. Okay. Whenever these slow waves have superimposed action potential. Someone have, uh, someone have not mute their mic. Please mute your mic. Okay. So this slow wave, whenever this slow wave have action potential, Okay, then only there is some secretion and there is some motility. Okay. Hey, guy, go ahead. Guy, go ahead. Thank you. Are you going? I guess one hour. Hey, one hour. Guy, go ahead. I give one hour. Wow, wow, very fast. So please, all of you, please mute your mic. Okay. If you have only some questions, then only you can unmute and ask questions, or you can write it on the chat. Just unmute and ask questions. Don't write on the chat also. And please turn off your mic. <clears throat> Sir, you slow wave for significant skin, huh? This is just the resting membrane potential. This is significant sign. The significance is when this slow wave um, reaches the threshold potential, then only action potential arises. Awesome. And um, whenever the slow waves, they are towards the depolarizing potential, it is easier to elicit the action potential. Let's suppose it has the resting membrane, the resting membrane potential is fluctuating, every time fluctuating. It is minus 45 to minus 60 or 65 millivolt. Okay, so if the um, resting membrane potential is towards the minus 60 millivolt or minus 65 millivolt, then it will take more time to generate action potential. Okay, Raksha, it will generate, it will take more time to generate action potential. Right? If the slow wave of depolarization, it is towards the uh, less negative millivolt, okay, less negative potential, then 
it will be easily eliciting the action potential. That is the significance. If it is towards the higher negativity, then it will take more time for muscle cell to depolarize. If it is towards the less potential, less potential, then it will take less time to depolarize. Okay. So this slow wave of depolarization, the upstroke portion, it is due to the influx of the sodium ion. And whenever it reaches the threshold potential, whenever it reaches the threshold potential, there is the spike potential. This spike potential is due to influx of calcium ion. Okay. Right. This spike potential is due to influx of calcium ion. Right. Nissan, Nissan is here with us. Nissan. Nissan Lime is any. Nissan Lime is any. Guy. So <clears throat> this slow wave of depolarization, the upstroke portion is mainly due to the influx of the sodium ion. Upstroke portion is due to the due to the influx of the sodium ion and the spike potential is due to the influx of the calcium ion. And spike means action potential is due to the calcium ion. Uh, you have you have recall please recall about the action potential in the skeletal muscle okay action potential in the skeletal muscle the skeletal membrane skeletal muscle have the resting membrane potential of how much minus 90 millivolt okay that is the resting membrane potential of minus 90 millivolt so during the resting membrane potential let's suppose this is the skeletal muscle and, and it is resting okay it is resting so when I touch, and this touch is not sufficient to elicit action potential, there is some change in the membrane potential. Okay, there is touch, someone is touching me, and this touch is not perceived in my brain, but there is touch. When there is touch, there is influx of the sodium ion due to opening of the mechanically sensitive sodium channel. There is opening of the sodium ion, the membrane potential slightly rises, but that torch is not greater enough to generate the action potential. So this torch dies up. Okay, there is little influx of sodium ion, membrane potential goes up, then it again comes back down. Okay, it again comes back down. Okay, and when greater torch is there, okay, when you poke at that time, many uh, sodium channels open, mechanically sensitive sodium channels open. So those opening of many mechanically sensitive sodium channel would be eliciting the threshold potential. That will be taking membrane potential to the threshold potential. Then only voltage gated sodium channel open and action potential occurs. It is in case of the skeletal muscle. Yes or no? Am I clear? That is in case of the skeletal muscle, right? That is in case of the skeletal muscle. There is a touch, there is opening of the mechanically sensitive sodium channel, which brings membrane potential towards the threshold potential. Once threshold potential is reached, there is the depolarizing portion of the action potential, which is entirely due to the opening of voltage gated sodium channels in case of skeletal muscles. But in case of smooth muscle okay in case of smooth muscle there is slow waves of depolarization okay there is slow waves of depolarization these slow waves of depolarization they are due to the opening of sodium channels okay they are due to opening of sodium channel whenever these slow wave of depolarization reaches the threshold potential action potential occurs and this generation of action potential it is due to opening of calcium ions okay it is due to opening of calcium ions entirely due to opening of calcium ions we have recalled about the mechanism of muscle contraction in this smooth muscle whenever there is any stimulus then there is the action potential is generated in the smooth muscle action potential once generated there is the influx of the calcium ions 
calcium, it binds to the chamomile and it causes contraction. Yes or no? There is the movement of the calcium ion in smooth muscle. Okay. So this spike potential in the uh, smooth muscle, the frequency it may vary. Okay. Sometimes there may be one spike or sometimes there may be 10 spikes. Okay. This frequency of spike potential in the smooth muscle, it may vary. Okay. Sometimes it may spike for just one time and sometimes it may spike for more, many times. Okay. Sometimes it may spike for many times. Nishan, are you clear? Are you clear, Nishan? Nishan Kanga. Nishan. Nishan the guy of the warrior as a bonga and is a two map nickel in the answer. So this, this slow wave of depolarization, it is known as basic electrical rhythm. Okay. This is known as basic electrical rhythm and it is generated by interstitial cells of kajal. Okay. It is generated by interstitial cell of kajal. Right. It is generated by interstitial cells of kajal. Nation family interstitial stellate cells of kajal. <clears throat> it is increased by acetylcholine and it is decreased by it is decreased by the <clears throat> adrenaline okay or norepinephrine it is increased by the it is increased by the acetylcholine and it is decreased by the decreased by the adrenaline so this muscle layer these interstitial cells of kajal they are located in the outer circular muscle layer near the myenteric plexus of the stomach and small intestine okay and it is present in the submucosal border of the circular muscle in the colon okay in colon it is present in the submucosal border of the circular muscle and in the um, stomach and intestine it is present in the outer circular muscle layer okay <clears throat> so it is four per minute in the stomach 12 per minute in the urinum and 8 per minute in the ileum and in the colon it is 2 per minute okay 4 per minute in the stomach 12 per minute in the urinum and 8 per minute in the ileum and the motility activity only starts whenever there is basic electrical rhythm right motility only starts whenever there is basic electrical rhythm significance is that Okay, Raksha, significance is that whenever okay, basic sir. electrical basic electrical rhythm it is generated, then only peristaltic wave of contraction occurs. Okay. If there is no basic electrical rhythm generated, then peristaltic wave of contraction does not occur. Okay. After stimulation of the um, basic after generation of the basic electrical rhythm, only there is start of peristaltic wave of contraction or motility and secretion occurs only when basic electrical rhythm is generated okay so it is like the pacemaker cell okay ber is like the pacemaker cell you know the pacemaker cell of the heart right you know the pacemaker cell of the heart it is the sno if sno is not able to generate the action potential then the atrial muscle fibers and ventricular muscle fibers, they will not be generating the action potential or they will not be generating the contraction. Likewise, if BER is not generated, then there will be no regular rhythmic peristaltic wave of contraction. Though peristalsis can be generated by itself, but there will not be rhythmical regulated wave of contraction okay am i clear am i clear yes sir <clears throat> so you in case of uh, cardiac muscle if sa node is not able to generate contraction or if sa node is not able to generate the action potential 
then AV node will take its charge. If AV node is not working, bundle of piece and for PNG system, they will be generating the action potential. Okay. Likewise, in skeletal muscle, if there is no BER, if there is not generation of basic electrical rhythm also, then also chemical irritation of the food, stretch of the food, they will be generating the peristaltic wave of contraction. But those peristaltic wave of contraction will not be regulated. They will not be um, regulated and they will not be the, in the proper sequence. Okay, they will not be in the proper sequence. So this was about the last class question. Now mastication, okay. So last time we discussed about the salivation, right? Last time we discussed about the salivation. So today we'll be discussing about the mastication. So mastication is the process of breaking down the complex food particles into the simpler form. Okay, mastication is the process in which the complex food particle is broken down into the simpler form. So <clears throat> it is the mechanical process. So mastication, whenever we are doing mastication, it helps in lubrication of the food into the mucus. It helps in breaking down the cellulose, cellulose in the food particles into the simpler form. Okay, it helps in increasing the surface area of the digestive enzymes so that the digestive enzymes can act on the digestive enzymes can act on the food particles. It helps in the stimulation of the test receptors. If mastication is not done properly, then it may cause corrosion of the gastrointestinal tract. Okay. So mastication is necessary. And it helps in stimulation of reflex secretion of different types of salivary and gastric juices and intestinal secretion. Once mastication is there, mastication process starts, our stomach and the small intestine, they begin to produce the gastric juice. It helps in running out of time once here. It helps in digestion of polysaccharides into the disaccharides. It helps in formation of the bolus of the food and it helps in propulsion of the uh, propulsion into the pharynx, pharynx and uh, which helps in easing the food um, to the stomach okay and it helps in preventing the overeating as it satisfies hunger okay so these are the functions of the mastication so mastication or chewing reflex it is um, originated from the fifth, fifth cranial nerve, mainly from the fifth cranial nerve, trigeminal nerve, and some of the fibers. So they originate from the pons or from the reticular formation, reticular areas, then from the hypothalamus, amygdala, and some from the cerebral cortex near the sensory areas for touch and smell. Okay, these are the centers for the mastication. Okay. These are the centers for the mastication. It originates from the fifth cranial nerve, pons, reticular formation in the medulla oblongata, hypothalamus, hypothalamus, amygdala, cerebral cortex near the sensory areas for the smell and taste. Please mute your mic. <clears throat> so how the process of mastication it starts. Okay, how the process of mastication it starts. So the presence of the food in the mouth, at first it initiates the reflex inhibition of the muscles of mastication. The muscles of the mastication, temporalis, mancestral muscles, they are inhibited. So when they are inhibited, the lower zone, it drops downward. Okay, so when lower jaw drops downward, so it initiates the stress reflex of the jaw muscles. The jaw muscles initiates the 
stress reflex due to which there is the rebound contraction of the rebound contraction of the muscles of mastication to cause the closure of the teeth so whenever teeth is closed then there is the compression of the bolus against the lining of the mouth and whenever it touches the lining of the mouth there is again inhibition okay there is again inhibition and the <clears throat> lower muscle jaw drops again again downwards there is again the stress reflex is again generated and this process continues until and unless the food are favorable favorable for swallowing okay this is the process of mastication whenever there is presence of food in the mouth there is the inhibition of the muscles of mastication when ma muscles of mastication are inhibited the lower jaw it drops downward whenever lower jaw it drops downward there is the it's stress reflex generated in the muscles of mastication which leads to rebound contraction of the mouth okay rebound contraction causing the closure of the teeth once the um, closure is there there is the compression of the food against the lining of the mouth which again inhibits the uh, jaw muscles once again allowing the lower jaw to drop drop and there is again the rebound contraction again and again and the mastication process only um, continues okay mastication process continues until the foods are favorable for uh, swallowing okay <clears throat> then there are the phases of swallowing okay once mastication has completed then the food is swallowed okay once mastication is completed food is swallowed so food swallowing of the food mastication process is also the reflex swallowing is also the reflex swallowing or deglutition is also the reflex so swallowing is also the reflex so um, swallowing process have um, three phases okay swallowing process have three phases so first phase is the voluntary phase okay first phase is the voluntary phase or oral phase second phase is the pharyngeal phase or involuntary phase and third phase is the esophageal or involuntary phase mastication process uh, swallowing process has three phases okay swallowing process has three phases first phase is voluntary after chewing is completed after chewing is completed we generally voluntarily swallow the food okay we voluntarily swallow the food that means that is under our control swallowing of the food is under our control so first phase is oral phase or voluntary phase that is under our control after food is being swallowed after food reaches into the pharynx it is entirely involuntary okay it is entirely involuntary pharyngeal and esophageal phase is involuntary oral phase is only voluntary okay it has three phase so this one is the voluntary phase okay this one is the voluntary phase so once the food is completely chewed and um it is ready to be swallowed we voluntarily swallow the food okay once food is swallowed okay once food is voluntarily swallowed and reaches to the pharynx then once it reaches to the pharynx then it is involuntary right it is involuntary it goes down esophageal and pharyngeal stages are involuntary voluntary phase is oral phase and pharyngeal and esophageal phase they are involuntary phase so voluntary phase when food is ready for swallowing it is voluntarily squeezed okay it is voluntarily squeezed and roll posteriorly into the pharynx by the pressure of the tongue upward and backward against the palate okay when food is ready for swallowing it is voluntarily squeezed and it is rolled posteriorly into the pharynx 
by the pressure of tongue upward and backward. So, swallowing is the reflex process that is initiated by the voluntary act of collect, collecting food on the tongue. Okay, collecting food on the tongue. So, once food is collected in the tongue and mouth is closed, the tongue is pressed against the gums and heart palate, uh, gums and heart palate, propelling the food into the pharynx. Okay, once food is completely collected, there is the closure of the mouth and the tongue compressed uh, compresses the food particles into the gums and heart palate. So food is propelled into the pharynx. Okay. So bolus stimulates the receptors around the opening of the pharynx, especially on the tonsillar pillars, and impulses passes to the swallowing center to initiate the automatic sequential activity. Okay. Once food reaches into the pharynx and the tonsillar pillar, there is a stimulation of the receptors. There is the stimulation of the receptors and there is the stimulation of the receptors and food propels is propelled into the pharynx. <clears throat> then pharyngeal phase. Okay, once bolus reaches into the posterior portion of the phalanx, it stimulates the epithelial swallowing receptors along the opening of the pharynx, especially on the tonsillar pillars, and information from these passes to the brainstem, and it initiates the um, automatic pharyngeal muscular contractions as follows. Okay, once the bolus of the foot, it, it reaches into the pharynx, then there is the automatic pharyngeal contraction of the contractions and those are as follows okay so once food reaches into the pharynx the soft palate is raised okay soft palate is raised so that the food doesn't enter into the nasopharynx there is the pulling of the platypharyngeal folds medially okay soft palate is raised there is the pulling of the platypharyngeal folds medially the larynx is pulled upwards and anteriorly and epiglottis swings backward so that uh, the, there is the closure of the trachea. The vocal cords they are approximated uh, so close that uh, so close to uh, the vocal cords are ap approximated, closing the opening of the trachea. And there is the inhibition of the respiration in whichever phase is okay. There is the inhibition of the respiration of the trachea. The respiration it is inhibited. In whichever phase it is, okay, it is known as the deglutition apnea. Okay, it is known as the deglutition apnea. Then pharyngeal muscles they contract, pushing the bolus towards the esophagus, and there is the relaxation of the upper esophageal sphincters, and the upper uh, the esophagus receives the food bolus of the food, and between the swallows, the sphincter is closed so that there is no entry of the air into the esophagus. Okay, there is no entry entry of the air into the esophagus. So this is the pharyngeal phase of swallowing. Okay, the soft palate is raised. Soft palate is raised. I will show it in the figure. Right, the soft palate it is raised so that the nasopharynx is closed. There is no entry of the food into the nasopharynx. The vocal cords are approximated. Okay, the vocal cords are approximated and the platypharyngeal folds, they are pulled medially so that the bolus of the food, they are compressed and goes towards downward. The epiglottis, it swings backward towards the opening of the trachea. Okay, epiglottis, this is the epiglottis. Epiglottis, it swings backwards towards the opening of the trachea so that there is no injury of the food towards the trachea. And during this phase, there is the during this phase, there is the deglutition apnea. Okay. During this phase, there is deglutition apnea. And respiration stops in whichever phase it is. Right. Once the bolus of the food is completely chewed. Okay. Once the bolus of the food it is completely chewed and it is ready for swallowing. It is ready for swallowing. The bolus, the tongue. Okay. The tongue it compresses the bolus of the food against the soft palate. Okay. And 
this soft pellet it is raised upward so that food particle doesn't enter into the nasopharynx okay food particle doesn't enter into the nasopharynx and the bolus of the food it goes downwards once it goes downwards the platopharyngeal folds these are the platopharyngeal folds folds the platopharyngeal folds they are pulled medially okay the platopharyngeal folds are pulled medially which squeezes which squeezes the food downwards so once food goes downward once bolus goes downwards the epiglottis it swings backwards towards the trachea okay epiglottis it swings backward towards the trachea so that food particles doesn't goes into the trachea okay and vocal cords they are also approximated and the larynx is also raised up okay larynx is also raised up and it goes towards the esophagus okay it goes towards the esophagus so <clears throat> there is the relaxation of the upper esophageal sphincter so that food goes to the esophagus okay so that food goes to the esophagus and food uh, passes to towards the esophagus <clears throat> now esophageal phase okay esophageal phase so the contraction of the pharyngeal muscles initiated by the swallowing center it moves uh, moves the bolus from the pharynx into the, into the esophagus okay in the esophagus after reaching into the esophagus there is the start of primary peristaltic wave of contraction okay there is the start of primary peristaltic wave of contraction so <clears throat> the primary peristaltic wave of contraction it moves the food bolus of the food towards the stomach okay it moves the bolus of the food towards the stomach so when bolus reaches the end of the esophagus uh, end of the esophagus lower esophageal sphincter is relaxed okay lower esophageal sphincter is relaxed and bolus of the food enters into the stomach okay so it takes about 8 to 10 seconds for the bolus to reach into the stomach right it takes about 8 to 10 second to reach the bolus of the food towards the stomach so if the primary peristaltic wave of contraction it doesn't it is not um, sweeping out the bolus of the food then secondary peristaltic wave of contraction is generated okay if primary peristaltic wave of contraction is not sufficient to pass the bolus of the food then secondary peristaltic wave of contraction is generated secondary peristaltic wave of contraction it sweeps the uh, bolus of the food into the stomach so we have to uh, remember the steps of peristalsis okay <clears throat> so this is the pharynx this is upper esophageal sphincter so once the bolus of the food it reaches here then just behind the bolus there is the contraction ring is there okay just behind the bolus there is the contraction ring and just forward to the bolus there is the relaxation okay forward to the bolus there is relaxation so this this contraction ring it passes throughout the esophagus okay this contraction ring it passes throughout the esophagus and this contraction ring it is generated by the um, acetylcholine and substance p okay acetylcholine and substance p it causes contraction just behind the bolus and relaxation in the <clears throat> forward direction okay relaxation in the forward direction it is due to the vasoactive intestinal polypeptide and nitric oxide okay relaxation just ahead of the bolus it is due to vasoactive intestinal polypeptide and nitric oxide contraction be before the bolus okay behind the bolus contraction behind the bolus it is due to the it is due to the substance p and acetylcholine okay contraction is due to the substance p and acetylcholine so this contractile ring it appears just behind the bolus and it 
it passes towards the stomach sometimes the, this relaxation it is it is um it is um, sometimes this relaxation it proceeds many centimeters down the <clears throat> down the um, gi system okay suppose food is in the uh, esophagus food is in the esophagus but the stomach is relaxing the um, intestines they are begin they are beginning to secrete the intestinal contents okay so this this is known as receptive relaxation okay this is known as receptive relaxation this is known as receptive relaxation right so you have to know the <clears throat> swallowing reflex okay before that let's see about let's see about the peristaltic wave of contraction okay so whenever there is the presence of presence of uh, food or presence of bolus in the uh, mouth or esophagus um, in the esophagus and in the stomach then it will cause the mechanical stimulation okay there is a stretch right there is the stretch or due to the chemical stimulation the sensory neurons they are activated okay sensory neurons are activated these sensory neurons these sensory neurons they activate two sets of neurons right whenever there is stretch okay whenever there is any mechanical stimulation or there is any chemical stimulation there is stimulation of sensory neuron right just remember this whenever there is any mechanical stimulation or chemical stimulation this will cause stimulation of sensory neuron this stimulation of sensory neuron will release the serotonin okay serotonin is released this this will release the serotonin this neuron will release the serotonin okay so serotonin once released serotonin will activate the anterograde neuron and retrograde neuron this one is the anterograde neuron pink one is the anterograde neuron and greenish one it is the retrograde neuron okay right it is the retrograde neuron green one is the retrograde neuron and pink one is the anterograde neuron so this is this one is the sensory neuron whenever there is any mechanical stimulation or chemical stimulation then sensory neuron is activated sensory neuron this sensory neuron will release the serotonin okay this sensory neuron will release the serotonin once this sensory neuron releases the serotonin it will activate the anterograde neuron that is going forwards and retrograde neuron that is going backward okay this is the retrograde neuron this one is the anterograde neuron pink one is the anterograde neuron this one is the retrograde neuron okay so once serotonin is released once serotonin is released the retrograde neurons they will release the acetylcholine and substance p retrograde neurons will release acetylcholine and substance p and generates the contractile ring it will generate the contractile ring whereas the anterograde neurons anterograde neuron it will release the vasoactive intestinal polypeptide and substance p and produces relaxation several centimeters below the gut okay several centimeters down the gut it will produce the relaxation for example food is present in the esophagus so contractile uh, bolus is present in the esophagus contractile ring just appears behind the bolus okay contractile ring just appears behind the bolus and there is the relaxation several centimeters down towards the stomach and in the intestine okay whenever you are in excessive hunger presence of the food in the mouth it starts it starts secreting the gi secretions it is starts secreting the hcl and it is starts uh, secreting the bicarbonates from the from the small intestines okay so whenever there is any chemical or mechanical stimulation the sensory neurons are activated sensory neurons whenever 
sensory neurons whenever they are activated sensory neurons they will secrete the serotonin okay serotonin this yellow one yellow neuron yellow sensory neuron it will secrete the serotonin once serotonin is secreted this neuron it will activate two sets of neurons okay it will activate two sets of neurons one neuron it is going anterograde anterograde means towards the forward direction one neuron towards the backward direction green one is the backward direction so this forward going neurons they will cause relaxation in the forward direction they will cause relaxation in the forward direction and backward neurons back neurons okay and retrograde neurons they will be causing the contraction behind the bolus let's suppose this is the pipe okay this is the pipe if you want to empty the content so here you have to cause contraction okay there is the, there is the in this pipe there is there is the full of the um, water or something okay this pipe is full of water or something so you want to empty this pipe so you have for emptying this pipe you have to uh, press it here okay at one side and you have to swipe it off okay you have to swipe it off like this so that the contents are squeezed okay so that the contents are squeezed so peristalsis is also the same okay once bolus of the food it reaches in some part of the gi tract let's suppose in the esophagus contractile ring it appears just behind the bolus and it sweeps the contents in the forward direction okay so this is the peristalsis sometimes there is anti peristalsis also in some condition pathological condition or if there is some irritation in the gastric mucosa then it may also cause the anti peristalsis in some condition but normally there is peristalsis and which goes from oral side to aboral side okay oral side to aboral side oral aboral okay oral aboral side so contraction behind the bolus you have to remember this okay contraction behind the bolus it is produced by retrograde neurons okay retrograde neurons contraction behind the bolus is by the retrograde neurons that secrete acetylcholine and substance p right contraction behind the bolus is by retrograde neurons that secretes acetylcholine and substance p relaxation in the and <clears throat> forward direction relaxation in the forward direction is produced by anterograde neurons that secrete vasoactive intestinal polypeptide and substance p okay relaxation in the forward direction is produced by anterograde neurons that secrete vasoactive intestinal polypeptide and nitric oxide okay <clears throat> am i clear am i clear yes sir yes sir if not clear then we will be coming uh, we will be talking about this later on also okay if you are not clear then we will be talking it uh, later on also so this is this is again the same figure right this is the mechanic this is the gastric lumen if there is any mechanical stimulation sensory neurons are activated so there is the retrograde neurons there is the anterograde neurons so when these retrograde neurons are activated there is the contraction behind the bolus towards the oral side okay which releases the acetylcholine and substance p relaxation is produced towards the anal side or Relaxation is towards the anal side or aboral side by um, anterograde neurons. This is the anterograde neurons which releases vasoactive intestinal polypeptide and nitric oxide. Okay, so in the exam, this is important. Right, this is very very important. It has come many a times. Please, whoever have written those um, markings, whoever have made the screen unclear, please. just clear it out do not write anything on the screen please just clear out the screen <clears throat> so this is very very important okay swallowing reflex it has it has been asked many times right so 
if there is reflex, then you have to write this five points. Okay, you have to write these five points. All the reflex. What is reflex? Reflex. It is the involuntary motor response to threshold sensory stimulus. Yes or no? Reflex. It is the involuntary motor response to threshold sensory stimulus. So reflex has five component. Receptor. There must be receptor. There must be apparent nerve. There must be integrating center. There must be efferent nerve, and there must be target organ. Okay. So these are the components of the reflex. Right? There must be receptor. There must be apparent nerve. There must be integrating center. There must be efferent nerve, and there must be target organ. You have read it on the baroreceptor reflex also. Yes or no? In the baroreceptor reflex, you in the exam. There was the question about the baroreceptor reflex, right? So you have to write in these five topics. So swallowing, swallowing reflex. I mean, so be like now your receptor, so be aru. Oh, you, you, you have to write all these points, right? Swallowing reflex. There is a little story because swallowing reflex have been asked many times. Okay, if swallowing reflex is asked, just you write these five points. There is receptor. Receptors are what? The, there is the touch and touch and taste receptors of the mouth and pharynx. Receptor is that. Right? Apparent nerve is fifth cranial nerve, ninth cranial nerve, and tenth cranial nerve. Okay, fifth cranial nerve, ninth cranial nerve, and tenth cranial nerve. Integrating center. There must be center. That is the swallowing center. It is the nucleus tractus solitarius and ambiguous nucleus ambiguous, which is present in the upper medulla and lower pons. Okay. Swallowing center is the so swallowing center is the nucleus tractus solitarius and nucleus ambiguous, which is present in the upper medulla and some parts of the lower pons are the integrating center. Efferent nerve is five, nine, ten, eleven, and upper few cervical nerve. Sometimes seventh cranial nerve also is there. Right? Pune book ma in some books seventh cranial nerve is included. In some book seventh cranial nerve is not included. Okay, so you may write down seven cranial nerve as well as seven, five, twelve, nine, ten. Okay, seven, five, twelve, nine, ten. Seven, five, seven, twelve, five plus seven, how much? Twelve. Five, seven, twelve, nine, ten. You can remember like this. Five, seven, twelve, nine, ten. Five plus seven, how much? Twelve. Right? Five plus seven is twelve. Five, seven, twelve, nine, ten. That is the efferent nerve. And target organs is muscles of tongue, pharynx, esophagus, and respiration. Okay, muscles of tongue, pharynx, esophagus, and respiration. Am I clear? It clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. so i will i will repeat it again so receptor is what receptor is touch receptors and the taste receptors present in the mouth and pharynx receptor is touch receptors and the taste receptor present in the mouth and the pharynx apparent nerve which takes signal to the swallowing center swallowing center it is fifth cranial nerve ninth cranial nerve and tenth cranial nerve okay center is center is Um, swallowing center, which is present in nucleus tractus solitarius and nucleus ambiguous, that is present in upper part of medulla and lower pons. Okay, efferent nerve is five, seven, nine, ten, and twelve. Efferent nerve is five, seven, nine, ten, and twelve. Effect is, or the target organs. Effect is muscle of the tongue, pharynx, esophagus, and respiration. Okay. these are the components of swallowing center swallowing reflex okay these are the components of swallowing reflex right if in exam if there is question about the swallowing reflex then you have to write down these points okay you have to write down about these points if the question is regarding the phases of swallowing If the question is regarding the phases of swallowing, you have to write oral phase, pharyngeal phase, and esophageal phase. Okay. If swallowing reflex is there, you have to write these five points. If question is about the 
phases of swallowing you have to write oral phase esophageal phase and oral phase pharyngeal phase and esophageal phase oral pharyngeal esophageal okay and if question is about the oral if question is about the phases you have to write down the phases and you have to explain those phases and if it is about the reflex you have to write down these five points hmm. am i clear you can raise your hand there is the option raising your hand okay you can raise your hand so now <clears throat> disorders okay there is the option for raising the hand so you can raise your hand when i whenever i ask question um, are you clear okay so aerophagia right so aerophagia means uh, aerophagia means the air is unavoidably swallowed during eating and drinking in the nervous individuals in the nervous individuals the um, tone of the upper esophageal sphincter in the nervous individuals the tone of the upper esophageal sphincter it is decreased okay tone of the upper esophageal sphincter it is low okay so due to that the air it goes inside right then there is another condition known as achalasia cardia achalasia cardia okay so in this the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter it is increased okay so this is the lower esophageal sphincter right this one is the lower esophageal sphincter the tone of the lower esophageal whenever it is increased then the food is accumulated in the esophagus okay food is accumulated in the esophagus so there is the dilatation of the esophagus due to accumulation of the food we can see this we can see this in the uh, <clears throat> x rays also right we can see this in the x rays right so treatment for the achalasia cardia it is uh, the injection of the botulinum toxin so whenever botulinum toxin is injected in the uh, musculature of the lower esophageal sphincter then it produces relaxation there and it the food particles goes downwards right then there is gastroesophageal reflux okay gastroesophageal reflux the tone is decreased in the lower esophageal sphincter okay the tone is decreased in the lower esophageal sphincter so whenever tone is decreased in the lower esophageal sphincter the gastric contents they uh, come towards the esophagus which leads to is uh, heartburn and esophagitis okay this leads to heartburn and esophagitis then there is no another term known as dysphagia dysphagia is the difficulty in swallowing okay dysphagia is the difficulty in swallowing so these are the applied aspect aerophagia it means the accumulation um, uh, entry of the air into the esophagus is the aerophagia it is usually seen in the nervous individuals achalasia cardia achalasia cardia it is the increased tone of the lower esophageal sphincters um due to which there is the incomplete relaxation on swallowing the food particles they are accumulated in the esophagus the treatment is uh, injection of the injection of the botulinum toxin so that there is the relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincters gastroesophageal reflux in the gastroesophageal reflux there is the incomplete relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincters so that the gastric contents they come to the uh, they come to the esophagus which leads to heartburn and esophagitis then then there is the dysphagia which is the difficulty in swallowing so this is the end of the lecture now let's uh, do some mcqs okay let's do some mcqs um, someone can on their mic hey mic ek bhi jaane on kare hum so which phase of the swallowing process is involuntary
pharyngeal and esophageal is the correct answer. These two are in voluntary phase. Okay. And second question. To generate the following reflex, integrity of the chain involves all except medulla, trigeminal nerve, ninth and tenth cranial nerve, hypothalamus. The correct answer is hypothalamus because center is medulla oblongata. Yes or no? The swallowing center is medulla oblongata. So it is needed. Trigeminal nerve is the efferent nerve as well as afferent nerve. Ninth and tenth cranial nerve, it is also the efferent and as well as afferent nerve. These three are included, but hypothalamus is not included. Okay. So hypothalamus is the right answer. Then all of the following are true for deglutition apnea. Deglutition apnea. Except, okay, except. So it refers to the momentary inhibition of the breathing during swallowing, lasts until bolus of the bolus reaches the esophagus, prevents aspiration of food into the larynx of voluntary reflex. Voluntary reflex. D, mm. D, D. Yes, D. 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 <laughs> Okay, this question is accept. So all these three, A, B, and C, they are correct except except voluntary effects because deglutition is the involuntary. Okay, deglutition apnea is involuntary. Right? Except right? then dysphagia means loss of difficulty in swallowing. Difficulty in breathing, inhibition of difficulty in swallowing. 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 Pain in the Then the principal function of the lower esophageal sphincter, lower esophageal sphincter, is to allow the stomach acid into of the food of the stomach contents non-existent. Which one is the correct answer? C. 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 Yes. C is the correct answer. Lower is a major It helps in preventing the stomach contents to the esophagus. Okay. Chicken, chicken. Achalasia <laughs> cardia is characterized by e, accumulation of food in esophagus. Accumulation of food. Cardiac sphincters is <laughs> response of lower esophageal to the circulating resting in the number of nitric oxide. A is the correct answer. Accumulation of the food in the esophagus. Then deglutition center is located in midbrain, pons, medulla, cerebellum. B. You have to remember, so you have to remember there is pons also, right? So if there is no medulla, if in the option there is no medulla, then you can tick on the pons also. Right? Because it is present in the upward portion of the medulla and lower portion of the pons. Yes or no? So if there is both medulla and pons in the option, you tick on the medulla. If there is no, no medulla option, then you tick on the pons. Okay. Then but the option is both. Ajit? Option, so, option, option both. If both are there, you have to tick on the medulla. Okay. If there is pons and if there is pons and medulla both, then you have to click on both. Right? If there is pons and medulla like this, you have to click on medulla only. If there are four options and it consists of pons, medulla, midbrain, and cerebellum, you have to click on the medulla. You have to click on the medulla because mainly medulla is the integrating center. Okay. Some lower parts of the pons are also there but mainly medulla is the integrating center right but mainly medulla 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 because most of the centers are present in the medulla swallowing center is present in the medulla um, 
salivary center is present in the medulla respiratory center is present in the medulla the um, okay, heart core center is also present in the medulla most of the centers are present in the medulla so you have to keep on medulla, okay the process of swallowing involves all of the following except closure of the growth is involuntary uh, relaxation of the upper esophageal sphincters, involuntary movement of the tongue against the palate, uh, palate esophageal peris peristalsis. C. Involuntary movement of tongue against the palate. A. Yes, the correct answer is C. I, correct answer is C. Whenever we swallow, we voluntarily press the bolus of the food against the palate. Yes or no? So, this is the voluntary movement. Right. So, esophageal peristalsis is also there, involuntary relaxation of the upper esophageal sphincter is also there, closure of the glottis is also there. But this is not involuntary movement of the tongue against the palate. Right. This is voluntarily movement. Right. You have to remember this. Now, this is the end of the session. Thank you for your.